Next in this section we'll be talking about how to find zeros of a polynomial function. Uh, zeros have different names. Uh, zeros can be called roots, solutions, or x-intercepts. And uh, the, the major thing that's going to help us, especially when we talk more about uh, their graphs, is the x-intercepts. So it's, it's very important that you understand that zeros are also referring to the x-intercepts. And good news, uh, we know a little bit more about that because of how I was trying to get you to write x-intercepts in prior lessons, that f of x is equal to zero. Therefore, what that means is that y is equal to zero. So when you think about x-intercepts, all your x-intercepts will have a y value of zero. So it'll be something a comma zero. So let's see if we can't look at a couple examples of how to find zeros of a polynomial function. Here's the first one. And right now, the first way we're going to study uh, finding zeros of a polynomial function is by factoring. So what we're going to do, this is uh, something we've done, of course, in the past. We're going to set this equal to zero, and then we're going to try to factor this polynomial. Now, obviously, we're going to use the same factoring uh, factoring steps that we've used in the past. So the first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to uh, factor by grouping. And the reason we uh, are going to do that is because there is no common factor between these four terms. So we can't factor out a common factor, so next we're going to factor by grouping. And we know that because we have four terms. So what we're going to do is out of our, uh, our each section that we've grouped, we're going to factor out the common factor. So here's x squared and that's going to leave me uh, x plus 3 and then I've got to factor something out of this to make it look identical to this so what I need to factor out of this one is a negative 1 and that's going to leave me also x plus 3 so next what we're going to do is we're going to take that common factor of x plus 3 and factor it out so we will get uh, x plus 3 times and we're going to group together our coefficients so x squared and negative 1 now, as you've learned in the past, we know we're finished factoring if we end up with a linear term. Uh, this one is linear, but this one right here is what they call quadratic. So uh, sometimes with quadratics, we can just solve for x, or you can maybe possibly factor that. And that is also difference of squares. So that is factorable. So we'll get x plus 1 and x minus 1. So next what we can do is we can set each of the factors equal to 0 and solve to find the zeros for each factor. So x plus 3, when you solve that, you'll get a solution of negative 3. When you set x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve, you get a solution of negative 1. And then x minus 1 equal to 0 will give us a solution of positive 1. So as you can see through uh, factoring, we can find our zeros of negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. Now I found three zeros, and as you can see, based on the degree of my polynomial of 3, that that is all of the zeros that I'll find for this function. We'll look at another example. We're going to do the exact same steps. So what I'm going to try to do is factor this polynomial. In this polynomial, as you can see, there is a common factor. So we're going to set it equal to 0, and then we're going to factor out the common factor. Now, as I've explained in class before, I always like to factor out uh, a negative leading coefficient, if there is one, because I prefer to... Whoops. Let me go back. I forgot to factor the negative out. I prefer to factor with a positive leading coefficient, so anytime I can factor out uh, the negative, it's usually going to make my problem a little bit easier to factor. So I factored out a negative x squared, and that's going to leave me x squared minus 4x plus 4. Remembering that when you uh, factor out a negative, you're basically taking each term and dividing them by negative 1. So now we're going to try to factor that polynomial. So what I'll do first is I'll say, are there two numbers that will multiply to give me 4 that will add to give me negative 4? And they do exist, so we're going to use negative 2 and negative 2. So our next step in finding the zeros of this polynomial is to set each of the factors equal to 0 and solve. These are both linear, so I know I can't factor this. And this is a, I mean a monomial that has a degree of 2, so it can't be factored either. So I would multiply both sides by negative 1 and get x squared is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to 0 here. Here, say x minus 2 equal to 0, and I'll get x to be 2. And then over here, x uh, minus 2 to be equal to 0, and I'll get x to be equal to 2. Now, again, what we're going to do is go back and look at our original problem and determine, based on the degree, my polynomial should find four zeros. Uh, so we're going to learn a new way to write things, and uh, this is going to affect us when we're graphing things, because multiplicity is very important to us. So we actually found one zero here. 
uh, from this term and we found one here. Those are actually the exact same zeros. So we're going to say x uh, equal to 2 is our 0 and it has a multiplicity of 2. Uh, what we all can see here is because this is x squared, this really means it could be x times x equal to 0. So therefore each one of those x's could be equal to 0. So we'll get x is equal to 0, multiplicity of 2. So each of those zeros actually occurs twice. So therefore, if this occurs twice and this occurs twice, then that will give us our total of four. We'll look at one more example of this. And as you can see in this one, this problem is a little bit different because in this problem right here, it's already in factored form. So all you have to do if it's already in factored form, the leading coefficient really doesn't affect our, uh, our number of zeros unless there is a variable with it. But this case, there isn't a variable. So all I have to do is set the factored forms with a variable equal to zero and solve. So here I'll subtract one to get a solution of negative one. Here I'll add three, and then I will divide by two. Now going back to our original problem, based on how we were uh, finding what happens in terms of the end behavior of the last two examples, um, the end behavior of something like this when it's in factored form, this has a degree of 1 and this has a degree of 2, so therefore we'll find three zeros. This zero, since it only has a degree of 1, has a multiplicity of 1, but this, because there's an exponent of 2, will have a multiplicity of 2. So not only do we need to find the zeros, but the multiplicities of those zeros will also be very important to us when we go on and graph these functions.